We have two things in the tropics and subtropics that we are keeping a close eye on on this Wednesday, September 20th. What's going on, guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegas. We're first going to talk about this little coastal low that could become a subtropical storm off the southeast corner of the U.S., but bring tropical storm conditions to the United States. I'll break that all down in just one second. It's all semantics and meteorology behind that. Impacts would be similar, though, to a tropical storm. Then we're going to watch that new tropical depression. It is likely to develop over the next several days, maybe over the weekend. We're going to watch it closely, though, for our friends in the Caribbean, especially the Northeast Caribbean. Then I want to show you Nigel. It's just a cool-looking storm. That's going to be to the end of the video because we do have important things to talk about. Before we get into the video, if you do want to stay updated on the rest of hurricane season and the weather in general, please hit subscribe. If you do find this content helpful, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help us out a lot. Post in the comments where you are tuning in from on this Wednesday, September 20th. All right. So here's that thing off the southeast corner of the U.S. we're going to break down. Here is Nigel. That's going to be towards the end of the video. It's just eye candy as it's not going to impact anything, thankfully. And then here is our new disturbance that we are going to get into a big breakdown. I'm going to show a bunch of models. I had a request to show more than just the Euro and GFS, so we are going to do that. And by the way, if anybody has any suggestions about what they want to see on this channel, please post that in the comments as well open to everything. Again, this is a meteorological discussion here that we like to have on this channel and scientific and all that stuff. So if you want to see something, please suggest a way. I'm open to all of that. So thank you guys for tuning in and thank you to all the new subscribers. First and foremost, here is this system that is likely going to be here. This is likely going to be at least a non-tropical coastal low, but it could take on some subtropical characteristics. I'm going to show you some impacts. Impacts will be very similar to that of a tropical storm but it's likely going to be at least a beefy tropical low. You see some heavy rain towards Myrtle Beach, towards Hatteras, and then as we move up towards Virginia Beach, again, here are, is our closed isobar here, so it's likely going to have a well-defined center. It's likely going to look pretty gnarly on satellite and radar as this is coming up, and it will, again, bring tropical storm-like conditions to coastal Carolinas, into Virginia, into the Delmarva, and then up the east coast of the United States. This is Saturday. This is 4 o'clock. Again, we're going to be impacted by this more so than what we were with Lee. That stayed obviously way out to sea, and that was to be expected, by the way. But nonetheless, some very heavy rain likely pushing up at the New York City, Long Island, into Boston, and then eventually into New England as we get deeper into the weekend. In terms of the rain, and this is what I want to be kind of clear about, it could become a subtropical storm, and if it does, it would get a name. But even if it's not a fully tropical system, the impacts are going to be the same with tropical storm force, wind gusts, and very heavy rain. So this is the rainfall from Friday through Sunday. And Hatteras, again, picking up anywhere from 2 to 4 inches. This little bullseye here is likely going to be greater than 4 uh, in between Wilmington and in between Cape Hatteras and the Outer Banks. Again, just keep that in mind that even though... It's not going to be a tropical storm in all likelihood. And again, there's an outside chance it could. Impacts are going to be that, are going to be similar to a tropical storm, if that makes sense. And I'm going to show you that why. These are the wind gusts. Look at this. This is going to be Friday morning up and down the East Coast. These are the forecast future wind gusts here. It's a little breezy as our system gets going off the East Coast. Look at this. By Friday, 1 o'clock, wind gusts pushing 40 to 50 miles an hour through the Outer Banks. A little breezy for us through Virginia Beach and into Wilmington as well. Look at that. Friday evening, wind gusts 50 to 60 miles an hour on the Outer Banks. Still breezy as well for Virginia Beach, Wilmington, Atlantic City. Again, this is going to be a very broad system. It's going to be a large system as well. And again, that will bring tropical storm impacts even though it may just be a coastal low it might be a subtropical storm it's all going to be dependent upon if it can shed its fronts when it's subtropical that means there's still non-tropical characteristics involved and it's born off of a front that stalled rather than coming at us from the deep tropics again that is all a meteorological definition impacts though on the human side are going to be the same as a tropical storm so again i just want to be clear about that here look at this atlantic city saturday two o'clock 40 to 50 mile per hour wind gusts 30 to 40 mile per hour wind gusts coming to nantucket maybe even as far inland as boston as well as we move into saturday night and into sunday so that is that. We're going to keep tabs on that. Hit subscribe if you want to stay updated on this over the next few days. So again, kind of a tropical storm, even though meteorologically and scientifically, 
it may not all be there yet if it does not close off and have that warm core with all of the thunderstorms around its center. I keep on saying that. I'm beating that like a dead horse, but that's the, that's the deal. That's the meteorological definition that is needed for it to become tropical. It may not get there because it's going inter to interact, but regardless, still an impactful system coming up the eastern seaboard. All right, for my friends in the Caribbean, maybe even the southeast U.S., we're going to have to watch this closely. I want to preface this by saying that there is a lot of time to watch this, 7 to 10 days before even getting close to the Caribbean, and there is going to be a lot that's going to evolve with the steering currents and the evolution of the system. First and foremost, this is what I'm going to show you first, the satellite, which will have a lot to do with where this goes. Cabo Verde Islands here, Africa here, of course. Here is our system that is just emerging. Look out ahead of it, though. We have another area. It's not highlighted by the Hurricane Center, but it's a blossoming area of thunderstorms in the monsoon trough, as we call it here, that kind of just rolls right on through that. These two storms, in all likelihood, are going to kind of pinwheel around each other. And as that happens, there's going to be competing areas of low pressure, competing areas to be the dominant center. Number one, that's going to make it a little more difficult than the model, for the models to know until we get Hurricane Hunter aircraft in there, and we can't because that's so far out at sea. But it's going to be hard for the model to know where the actual center is, so it's going to be really hard to know where this is going until that happens. But number two, as these centers are kind of fighting with each other, competing to be the dominant one, it's likely going to stay weaker for longer a weaker system will likely have a better opportunity to not escape out to sea and to be able to get further west. So now we're going to get really, really involved in the model forecast, and we are going to dissect here what these models and ensembles are showing. So stick with me here. All right, so here first and foremost, I want to show you on the Euro model spin. Again, this is the low-level spin here. The darker the red, the more intense the spin is. And the smaller the circle, the more consolidated and more organized the storm is. So, for example, this is Nigel out here, a nice consolidated ball of red. Our system that just rolled off, you see it's big and broad and it's low color, meaning that it's not very organized. And then here's our other thing that I showed you on satellite, right in through here. Also big and broad and unorganized. Watch what happens. The two here play with each other. And now we have this big kind of area this broad area of low pressure on september 23rd rolling across the central atlantic still five or six days away here september 25th to 26th still likely an open wave there might be a little bit of low level spin trying to get going here but there we go and then this is why again if you live in the northeast caribbean just to keep a close eye on this the good news here at least for the model depiction and i want to be clear about this and what i'm going to say is that this is still a very weak system. The model even has it as an open wave at this point, which may not be all bad news if it stays weak. Again, we have had a very hot summer. We have had a very dry summer through Puerto Rico, through a lot of the Leeward and Windward Islands, the Virgin Islands. You name it, it's been dry. So we could use the rain. I'm not rooting for a strong storm here by any means. I want to be clear about that. But if we can keep a storm weak, depression, that would be awesome for us. It's something that we're going to keep a close eye on, though. This is going to be the high-level breakdown, and then I'm going to kind of go rapid-fire through the model so that everybody kind of sticks with me here, and I don't just, again, ramble on and on. But nonetheless, here would be the system here. It's trying to get organized as it turns away from the Caribbean. So again, we would like that as well. A couple of things that we are going to watch for its long-term future. And again, this is September 30th. So the one thing that I want to mention is like the butterfly effect. If something is modeled wrong here, right today as those balloons are launched in the United States, and there's a subtle change, it will be amplified 7 to 10 days out. We have no idea what this exact steering current is going to look like on September 30th. But what I want to show you here is some of the things that are coming into play. We're likely going to have building high pressure off of our coast, off of the Atlantic coast, the Canadian coast, the U.S. coast, and the Northeast. Our area of high pressure out here is what is going to steer it initially. If it got strong enough, we would like it to take that way out here around this area of high pressure. If it stays weak, though, this is the trend that we are going to watch. Clockwise flow around high pressure. 
would tend to send it even further west, maybe in this area. Okay, so this is the one thing that we're going to watch. And again, there's a lot of time to watch it. But that area of high pressure here, if this doesn't take its initial escape route. So we're keeping a close eye on it. Again, it's 7 to 10 days out. Still want to be clear about that, okay? Just want to thumbs up if you're with me here. All right, so here's Nigel again. Whoops, it did not grab my Telestrator. Sorry for making everybody dizzy. But the GFS is very similar in keeping this broad. It's still a big hodgepodge of unorganized thunderstorms right here. There's our open tropical wave. It still keeps it in pieces as we move towards September 26th, September 27th through the Caribbean. Now it takes it into the Caribbean and then wants to do something with it on September 30th, still keeping it in the Caribbean. Is the GFS going to be right? I wouldn't bet on it with how bad it's been this year, but it's one representation of it. Before we get into the Canadian and Icon models, which are models that do well, especially the Icon, the Canadian did very, very well with Idalia. I do want to show you some of the ensembles, and I'm going to take you to my other screen for that. This is something from tropicaltidbits.com. It's a great tool. It's a cool tool if you like to kind of geek out with us. Um, really, really great site. All of these numbers you see on the screen here, that's the pressure, okay? When they're tightly packed like they are right here, there is good agreement within the ensembles that we're going to have the system right here. Again, it's a very weak system, but right there. So as we take this further out in time, notice you're going to see some divergence here. We have some members of the ensembles closing in on the Northeast Caribbean. We have some making the turn out to sea. And this kind of highlights the two areas of... These two steering currents that we are watching, the blue here represents our big area of high pressure moving off the Canadian coastline in New England. And then here is our initial. So some of the ensemble members here do feel it pulling that tug north, but some take it right into the Caribbean. Again, this is the GFS, so that's what we're going to watch. Most of them, a few of them keep them towards the Bahamas, but most of them do pull it before it gets to the United States. European ensembles, same story. There's a little bit of divergence. Most of the members, though, do keep it away from the Caribbean. Some get close. That's why we have to watch. So there are the two different ensemble members. And again, we're watching the strength of that high there and where that high is up here. Canadian wants to keep it weak. So this is the growing trend here, that it's going to take its time to get going. So if it's going to impact land, we obviously want it to be weak. But we don't want it to impact land at all unless we want the beneficial rain that it could bring and again that's something that we are going to keep our eye on here going forward there it is on september 30th it's very similar to the gfs having that area of low pressure a weak one near the dominican republic haiti and the eastern side of cuba by september 29th or september 30th right there icon model only goes out to september 25th that is the 6z run let me put it back on the 0z run that's from uh last night here so i can get it to go out a little bit longer but it also keeps it weak and it keeps it low and it also develops something else behind it too so we're going to keep things likely active through september here with not just one but maybe a secondary system developing behind our likely tropical depression of the by the end of this week or into the weekend one thing i want to note here the icon is very very bullish on keeping this high pressure strong and kind of compact you see it here all of these isobars are closed so there's really not a lot of weakness for that storm to find and if it stays low like this and we do have that area coming off like this uh coming off the united states it will also help to keep this system low so again the icon canadian gfs would favor something getting into the caribbean maybe even something behind it as well so the point i'm trying to make is here there is nothing to freak out about at this point this is just something to watch these models are out here i want to break it down and i want to be that reliable source for those that don't know what the models actually are showing to talk and to have the conversation and to break it down meteorologically and to know why the models are showing what they are showing that is extremely critical to understand that um rather than just being like okay the icons here the gfs is here today the euro is here today we need to understand why it's doing that and we need to understand what the trend is doing with these models so that's what we're going to do and that's what we're going to keep on following here not only for 
northeast, maybe a couple of storms, but through the rest of hurricane season. If you found any of this helpful, please give it a thumbs up again. I really appreciate that. And I just want to thank all of the new subscribers. You guys have been awesome. It's been great having the conversation and meeting with you guys and you're meeting you guys, kind of meeting you guys anyway. But anyway, all right, that was a lot. So now we're going to end with a little bit of Hurricane Eye Candy here. There is powerful Hurricane Nigel, a Category 1 storm, 90 mile per hour winds. Look at this eye. It's still big. It's not as open as it was yesterday, but still a really cool satellite presentation. And I'm saying really cool because Nigel is not going to impact anybody on land. Shipping lanes, the fish, yes, of course, we don't want it there either. But it is helping to cool the Atlantic a little bit, so it's serving its purpose there. Again, just to show you that it's not going to land, here is the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center. Keeping it a Category 1 hurricane all the way through the North Atlantic. Look how far north that is. There's Newfoundland. Here are the Azores. Look at that. It's only 75 mile per hour Cat 1 as of Thursday evening, way up here. And then we have a strong post-tropical cyclone just meandering through the North Atlantic. All righty, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. This was a long one today. There's a lot to watch. There's a lot to break down. We are going to keep up with it. Nonetheless, if you found this content helpful, please give it a thumbs up again. If you want to stay updated on the rest of hurricane season and the weather in general, please hit subscribe. And we will catch you next time. Thank you so much, guys, for watching.